Understanding the distinction between genealogical and genetic ancestry is important for thinking about human genetic variation and population descriptors. This graphic from the 2023 report, Using Population Descriptors in Genetics and Genomics Research, a new framework for an evolving field, explains key differences between genealogical versus genetic ancestry. If we start with one of these individuals, we see a representation of their genealogy, commonly called a family tree. From the individual, it goes to two parents, four grandparents, eight great-grandparents, and so on, increasing into the past. These shaded areas going into the past represent the rapidly growing number of ancestors for each individual. If we consider these three individuals from different parts of the world, their genealogical ancestors overlap back in time relatively quickly because they have so many ancestors. Now we can turn to genetic ancestry. Due to the process of genetic recombination, the genome consists of segments or pieces of DNA inherited from different ancestors. If we consider a single segment of DNA, such as this green section here, that segment of DNA might be inherited from this purple individual's father. In the orange individual, that piece was inherited from their mother. Here, the blue individual inherited that piece from their father. We can trace the inheritance of that piece of DNA through different ancestors back in time to form these lines of ancestry. That's what is represented by these yellow, green, and pink lines for three different locations in the genome. One segment of your genome might be inherited down one line of ancestry, another piece down another line, and so on. As we trace these lines of genetic ancestry back in time, these lines meet in common ancestor events that are further back in the past than the overlap in pedigree or genealogical ancestry that occurs first. For the yellow section of the genome, the purple and orange individuals find their common ancestor first. Then, the common ancestor of those two meets with the common ancestor of the blue individual further back in time. That pattern can vary across the genome. So, for the pink lines of ancestry, we see that the orange and blue individuals have a common ancestor before they have a common ancestor with the purple individual. The inset also shows the concept of genetic ancestry. Here, we see three tubes that represent DNA from each of the three individuals. For the yellow lineage, we see the purple and orange individuals have a common ancestor before joining the blue individual. If we look at different locations in the genome, there will be different histories. But how does this appear in the patterns of DNA? We only observe sequences of DNA, as shown at the tips of these trees. The sequences of DNA inform us about who is related to whom. This green star on the pink lineage marks the idea that a mutation event occurred, changing an A to a C in the DNA. So this lineage is changed to a C, and both the orange and blue individuals inherited this mutation. These patterns of who is similar to whom, based on their DNA, are known as genetic similarity. It's important to note that we do not directly observe genetic ancestry that is, the paths through these ancestors. Rather, we observe patterns of genetic similarity through sequences of DNA. That is what allows us to reconstruct genetic ancestry. To learn more about the use of population descriptors in genetics and genomics research, visit nationalacademies.org slash population hyphen descriptors.